the climb. An impressive part of FRC, and when you really look back, it is quite a marvel. You're taking your about 120 pound robot, and you're lifting it up either a few inches, or maybe you're in a few feet, in hopes at the end of the match to either break a tie or extend your lead. It hasn't always been around in FRC. However, its legacy is very powerful, and even with 2020, there's a new emphasis to climb. It's been around for years, and is such an ingrained into FRC that I would like to go through its history so you can all know a little bit more about it, and also how it's become as interesting as it has been. So let's start out with the beginning of the climb in FRC. What many of us would consider the beginning of the climb would be in 2004, with first Frenzy raising the bar. However, I want to look a little bit more at how we got here. Because sometimes you want to define what you consider a climb. If you consider a climb grabbing onto a bar and lifting up, you'd be partially right, as that is what we all consider a climb. However, throughout the years there have been many different ways of climbing. And if you consider moving up a ramp or lifting yourself in elevation, that would be where it all started. A good example of where to start would be in FRC 2000 with the game Cooperation First. Within Cooperation First, there were many a time where you'd have to get up onto a, a score module so you'd be able to get some points by taking ownership by getting up on top. Fair enough. Another example of this would be in 2003 with the game Stack Attack, where at the end of the match you'd get points, point bonuses, for getting your alliance up on top of the center thing at the end. Of course, this is only going up a ramp. However, it would be a start. Now we're going to move on to 2004. With 2004, this would be the advent of the modern climb. There would be a bar, you'd have to climb up, and with a fitting name, raise the bar, you'd climb up to get some extra points to help you and your alliance win the match. This was the advent of it, and many teams were able to do it. With an extra bo point bonus of 50 points by climbing up, it was quite an impressive feat and was amazing to do to help you win the match. Now going on to the next few years, 2005, there was no example of this. However, in 2006, with First Frenzy, in First Frenzy we were able to see something like this yet again, where you try to get all three teams up on top of the middle platform, sorry, the platform on your alliance side within the middle of the field. Within that, you try to get all three teams up and you would get a bonus of 25 points. Although this was not a climb, per se, you wouldn't be climbing up a bar. This was another example of getting all three of your partners up on top of a ramp by helping each other out. Now with 2007, I would consider this a climb. However, it is up to debate whether you may or not. It's up to, to each person. Within this, at the end of the match, you have the opportunity to get on top of an alliance partner. What made this interesting is you're not climbing on top of a bar, you're not going up a rope or a pyramid. Instead, your alliance partner will help you get on top of them. For instance, many teams built a sort of aircraft carrier where you'd get on top of their aircraft carrier where they drop two flaps in the match you get on top of them and would consider a climb. You'd have to get off of the ground and the most easiest way was on top of your alliance partner. This was interesting as it was able to get you a, quite a nice point bonus as well as help you make it past your elims and, and further to help win a competition. Now let's move on. The next two years, 2008, there was no example of this like this. Lunacy, same thing. However, once we get into Breakaway, this is where an unstandard game became much more standard in this regard. Although each ball you scored in either of the two diagonal goals at the end of the field would get you one point, climbs would get you two. There would be a platform and a bar. So what you could do is grab onto the bar and climb up, which would give you two points, or get up and get on top of the platform, which would give you two. However, hanging off an alliance partner would give you three points. This would be another example. Here's the bar, climb onto it, and you'll get two points. Onto logo motion, your robot wouldn't climb, but at the end of the match, there would be a section with minibots where you would have a minibot latch on and then climb up there. However, this wouldn't be your original robot, so I wouldn't consider it as such. Now onto 2012 with Rebound Rumble. This was a little bit different. With Rebound Rumble, the way that you would climb wasn't exactly ordinary, per se. With Rebound Rumble, you would get onto a little truss with either two or three of your last partners, and you tried to balance to get a few to get a bonus. With this bonus, you would be able to help win the match, 
as three-team balances were very effective in making it further into elims at the World Champion. 2013 is sort of the odd man out when it comes to climbing, as it did have one of the most interesting, that being a pyramid on your side of the field, where at the end of the match you try to climb up and get up top. Of course, it wasn't relegated only to the end of the field, as there were some teams who would take most of, if not all, of the match to climb up. Although it would be a nice endgame feature where you try to climb up to get more and more points the higher and higher you went up. Of course, it didn't always work 100% of the time. However, it was a nice, interesting thing and a loop, as many teams would be able to get up onto the bottom bar. Getting up to the higher bars would be incredibly important to get more and more points. And although the Einstein champion team didn't consist of all of them climbing up to the top of the bar, it was an interesting thing for strategy and a bit of a fork in the road when it comes down to new strategies for climbing. 2014 Aerial Assist would not have the same feature. 2015 Recycle Rush would not have the same feature. However, 2016 Stronghold would have an example of something like previous years with a bar on the Stronghold that you'd be able to climb up. One of the ranking points was by scoring enough balls, eight and then rule change to 10, and then all three robots capturing by getting onto the baseline. However, there were bars so you'd be able to climb up and get 15 instead of five points for that in addition to the capture. With this, you'd be able to get a few extra points and although climbing didn't always decide the winner, it would be a nice extra 10 points to help with your alliance. On to 2017, this was another more interesting year where you'd be given a rope and you could, of course, make your own rope or be, decide to use the one given to you. However, you'd be able to climb up using that. 2017 wasn't exactly the best year for different types of robots as you were given a very strict frame perimeter, one or two different configurations. However, at the end of the match, every team would try and get up, get the rope into their robot so they'd be able to climb up using a variety of different means. This was, like 2013, a bit different than other ways of climbing, however, it was quite interesting. And with 2017, in the first few weeks of the season, climbing would be incredibly important. Not every robot could get the four rotors, and with the neat limbs, that fourth rotor would give an extra 100 point bonus. So until then, a climb worth 50 points was incredibly important, and there were several examples of regionals and districts where you'd hit, or even further into the season, where an alliance who didn't have a third consistent climber or with ones who'd fall would lose because they didn't have to climb, even if they were able to get more gears or be able to shoot more fuel. On to 2018, this was another good example of a climb where you're given a bar, you had to get three robots to climb, or of course to levitate to get a ranking point. However, with this, you'd, there were many examples of teams who'd be able to climb on there with either two teams getting on the bar with like a, almost like a detachable hook to climb up, or you'd have an example where a team would get onto the bar and flip up, or even you'd have examples of teams getting on the bar, dropping forklifts, and then them, another team driving on and going up. With here is another good example of climbing up with the bar. On to 2019, this one was a little bit different. It's not similar to the other years in the fact that you'd have to get up onto different ramps. I would consider this a type of climbing as it is the end of the match and you try and lift your robot up to get on top. It isn't a ramp per se, more of a few blocks you had to get on top of. There are many different ways of getting up there, whether it be lifting yourself up with different pistons. Good example was a team using what they would call their stinger mechanisms to get up, or even just uh, you didn't need to get up and on there. Some teams would have a way of getting up there without touching at all, such as teams 2767 and 1619 at the beginning of the season. On to 2020, of course this year hasn't had any regular season competitions, however there have been some good week zeros that I've been able to watch. However with this one, it's almost like a successor to 2012. However it's a bar, you get up, try to climb on it, grab onto it, and lift up. However, there is a balance component. What I've seen from the week zeros, and also from the collegiate competition that happened a few weeks ago, was that when teams would try to climb, whenever you touched the bar, you'd start to move it to one side, making it harder for another alliance partner to grab on, making it very important to line up with your alliance partners the second of. However, with this, it's also the balance component. So you get 25 points for a climb each, and then a 15 point bonus if you're able to balance with a partner, which also makes it incredibly important as well. And that's what makes this interesting. Climbs throughout the years in FRC have been interesting. From simple bars starting in 2004, 
all the way to different examples like with the rope climbing in 2017 and the pyramid in 2000, 2013, climbing's been interesting. It's always been fun to watch a robot get up near the end to climb up and then almost if and then make it onto the either win their competition or onto the Einstein field. It's always fun to watch it as at the end of the end of the match, even if you're trailing by a few points, you always have to watch out for another robot climbing. And it's always a ama an amazing feeling to watch your team or one you're watching to make that climb and then go on to win the match. Thank you all for watching. This has been the FRC Historian.